Hello there, my name is Rizio from Seven Smoke, and I'll be doing a tutorial series on how to use the Series Editor, which is the program that modders use to create new content for Series Sam games. We're doing this series in light of the recent announcement by Crow Team that they'll soon be releasing Series Sam Fusion 2017, a merging of the content of Series Sam HD and Series Sam 3, which will also bring with it an entirely new editor full of new capabilities. The program you'll see me using in this tutorial is the Series Sam 3 editor, but if you're watching this when Fusion 2017 is out, the interface should be mostly the same. For this episode, I'll be teaching you the sheer basics of the editor, where we'll create a decent looking environment where you can shoot a few enemies. Obviously, we'll need to start the editor first. You'll need the Steam version of Series Sam 3 to access the editor. From your Steam window, it can be found under Library, and then Tools, and then as Series Sam 3 Editor. I already have it installed here, although installing the editor shouldn't take too long. First thing you'll see when you start the editor is the license agreement. You just accept it, nobody ever reads these things anyway. And there you go, welcome to the editor. Before we start making anything, I recommend holding down Alt and then 8. This enables the explorer from which you can explore the files in Series Sam 3, which is incredibly helpful if you need to quickly access reference material from existing mods. Let's begin making our level now. Navigate to File, New, and then World. Now you're in the World Editor, and I'll teach you the basics of moving around. If you press Escape, you can now use the mouse cursor and WASD keys to move your camera around. You can also use the mouse buttons to move forwards and backwards. However, I find WASD keys much more flexible. You can also scroll your mouse cursor forward and backwards to change the speed at which your camera moves. Let's create some simple jumps you now. Press escape to exit the free movement mode. Now point your mouse somewhere on the grid and press insert. This will create this green box, which is called a simple model entity, from which we can create new models. Now, with the green box selected, press the E key. If the green box disappears, you are now in the mesh editor, as you can see here. Look at the right of the screen, you will see all these new tabs have appeared. For now, we only need create. Here we can create new primitives from which we will build our model. Select box, and now press Q on your keyboard, and collapse box guide, then box size. Give it a reasonable size, let's say 20 by 1 by 20. Now exit the box creation by pressing the tilde key, which is the key that is to the left of your one key on the keyboard. Now this is how your new mesh looks like in editor view. If you want to preview on how it will look like in game, then press numpad 6. You'll see it doesn't have any texture on it, so let's do that now. On the bottom of the screen, press layer. Collapse polygon maps and click the none here and make a new shader preset, like so. Press the yellow plus next to configurations and from shader select the standard shader. Now all these options here are for adding your editing your texture. Let's give the model a texture. Click on base texture, browse and navigate to content. Series Sam 3 and then textures. You can also create your own texture if you want, but that's for another episode. Let's use an existing texture for now. If you want to see what a texture looks like before you select it, hold down F3 while hovering over the texture to see a preview. You can pick any from this folder. I'll be using this one. Now, in base UV map, Type texture, it's case sensitive. And there you go. The texture looks a little big, so give base stretch values, these ones, a slightly bigger value. You should also add in a normal map here, which will give your texture a little more depth. Normal map textures have the NM suffix after them. Make sure you give this one a UV map as well and the same stretch values as your base texture. That looks nice. 
you can use notepad 9 to go back to edit view. Now let's make some more geometry. There we go. To move a uh, to move this around, hold down control while having all the polygons selected by double clicking the mesh and then drag these little arrows around that you see. The Alright, that's good. And then use Control C and Control V to paste a few around. This will do for now. Now press Insert again. Um, let's add an existing model to enhance the environment a bit. Let's go here. Uh, let's add a chair. Yeah, that'll do. You can move it around with the holding down control again. If you move these move these circles on the top, you'll rotate it. That looks um, acceptable for now. Now let's see how it looks in game by uh, pressing numpad 6 again. Well, the geometry looks good, but other than that, our level is bland and has no lighting. You'll also notice that there is no stepping sound when I enter the simulation mode. Let's fix that now. Go to layer again in the mesh editor. And now go here, material attributes, select content, series entry, databases, materials. Just pick the defaults for now. There we go, there's a stepping sound now. Now let's add some lighting. Select entity list here in the bottom, collapse the lights, and drag and drop this distant light into the world. Doesn't look good, but that'll come later. What I like, uh, what I like to do with the distant light entity, which is basically the sun entity, if you select it and then press Y, you'll be able to use the WASD movement to uh, rot to uh, move your entity around, like so. Let's position it like this. All right, that looks good. You can see that now we our level has some shadows. It still doesn't look that good though. So let's fix that by adding a probe light. Also go back into edit view. Um, now press shift B, which will bake the probe light. You can already see that uh, the chair looks a little better. Although the weird shadows are still there. So it means that the probe light doesn't bake the entire world. Let's select selection range for now. This purple box you see, this is the range of the probe lights. We'll have to increase that. Go to size here in the entity options. Make it a little bigger, like 30, 30, 30. Now, let's see how it looks in game. By the way, I'm uh, going into simulation mode by pressing Shift plus T here. You'll notice that it looks better, but the lightning is still fluctuating a little if you look closely. Let's fix that. Go to entity list effects and add post processing effects um, well we'll use the default for now content series entry presets post processing and default let's take a look in game now all right now it looks a lot more stable not liking that background though let's have a background go to entity list again collapse geometry add a cube background now the cube background is uh, a separate entity that you can select a background from. In order to not to make sure that the background entity doesn't interfere with the rest of the level, give it a very low Y value by pressing Q and then give it a Y value like minus uh, 100,000. Now let's um, select a background texture. It can be found here. Let's use this one. Alright, well, it looks a little weird here, but this is um, not a finished level, so there's no need to fix that for now. Other than that, it looks a lot more believable already. Now let's make the level interactive. First, we have not given the game a point where Sam should spawn, so go to Entity List again, Collapse Logic, like I've already done here, and drag and drop the chapter info into the world. Chapter info works like a checkpoint system, but for now let's use it to tell the game where Sam should spawn when beginning the level. First press N 
to open the entity list of all the entities in the world. And now find the world info, which is right here. And in the entity option, select first chapter. Now, hover your mouse over the chapter info and then press Ctrl Alt. And you'll notice that the game has now identified the first chapter as this one. So if you now press T, which is the standard testing, Sam will now spawn in this spot. So that's good. Something still missing though. Some weapons. Let's tell the game to give Sam some weapons when he spawns. Can be done very simply. Go to the chapter info and here under added weapons you can click any weapon. If you want him to spawn with a laser you can click laser or not. Just like that. Next let's add an item that the player can pick up. Go to entity list again, collapse other and drag and drop a generic item into the world. Now under the entity select the item params, go to content series sam databases items and you can pick all items from weapons to ammo to health. I'll pick some armor here, let's put some 50 point armor here. Sam can now pick up this armor. Next let's add in some things to shoot, so some enemies, go to entity list, characters and spawn in a lect character. Now let's say we want to add a Gnar here. We'll need to configure the puppet parameters and the behavior. Puppet parameters spawn the Gnar, while behavior tells it how it should attack the player. You can find the puppet parameters here. Content series sentry databases uh, puppets enemies. And let's pick the Gnar. There we go. There's our Gnar. And the behavior files can be found under content, series entry, databases, behaviors, enemies, and Gnar. Yeah. Let's say we want to add multiple of this Gnar on the same spot. Let's create a new spawner. This purple cone will appear over the Gnar. Collapse and now all these options can be configured to can be configured to how you want the Gnar to spawn. Let's say you want three Gnars to spawn, and every time after one dies, give a half a second delay. So now when Sam kills a Gnar, a new one will appear after a half a second. But when we test, nothing happens. We need to tell the game that he should spawn. These are so collapse logic in the entity list and scripts. There we go. Now press E and you'll open up the scripting menu. Scripting in the series editor works with the Lua language, although for simple functions like spawning enemies, you won't need to learn the language. So go ahead and type in enemy and then spawn maintain group. Now select the Gnar and then hold down Ctrl, Shift and Alt at the same time and then drag the Gnar to enemy. And if it turns green, that means you've successfully configured it, let's test it. That works. And now I think I've covered the basics of making a small level. You can expand this knowledge to create larger levels. You can't play these in game yet. When you uh, open up Series Entry and go to single player campaign, you can't play it there yet. But on how to make the game ready, I may do a tutorial on a later date. Final note, make sure you save your programs very often. The editor does have a tendency of crashing often, so just press Ctrl and S. And uh, tutorial. Make sure you save like, I don't know, every 5 minutes because the editor does crash for the most minor reasons and you do not want to lose any of your progress. Thanks for your attention and see you hopefully at the next episode. I hope you learned something from this tutorial.